Hi guys and thanks for joining me on another episode of Design and a Half. Today we're going to talk uh, about perfection. About perfection not necessarily from the perspective of a designer but from the perspective of absolutely anyone that has a job that requires a lot of attention. For example a developer, a business owner, um, absolutely anyone that is required to be really attentive and usually the the, the this problem with perf perfection just appears with people who are really passionate about what they do which is a major major concern because in, in a way perfection is good because it makes you focus w very good on, on on what you are doing and, and create things which are as, as close to perfection from your perspective obviously as possible but at the same time it takes quite of a high toll on yourself as an individual from a from a psychological perspective um, the reason why I'm saying this is because absolutely every individual that is focused on perfection is very tough on themselves and this is actually a bad thing because perfection doesn't always mean something good for example if we're talking about painting in painting a lot of good things happen from accidents happen from mistakes happen from things that you didn't necessarily want to be there but you probably have to take advantage of during the time that you're working and <clears throat> this is probably illustrated a lot by one of the sort of characters that become that has become sort of iconic for this this uh, concept of happy accidents which is Bob Ross I'm probably I'm pretty sure that most of you are familiar with with his uh, painting classes the joy of painting with Bob Ross and during his uh, painting classes he always made small mistakes during his painting process and that ensured that his paintings did not look alike and, and felt alive just from the, from the point of view of the fact that we as people make mistakes all the time having said that it's it's okay to to try and reach perfection at some level because we all want to do it we we all want to have a uh, work output that is really cool and is amazing and but the question is why do we do this do we do it because we want it to be perfect or because we fear and we think about others judgment of us do we do it because we want the outcome to reflect us and as, as a person in the sense that we are trying to be perfect and we sort of represent ourselves through our work or is it just trying f or, or are we just trying for for, for perfection to be able to appease other people to make them think we're perfect uh, and, and we, we there's nothing to, to be to be discussed about what we do there's nothing f flawed about it we, we don't have any problem usually this happens when you're trying to avoid conflict I, I have this problem myself because I'm not a conflictual type of person in the sense that I'm not actively seeking conflict Whenever there's conflict, especially which is re design related, I try to stay away from it. However, at the same time, I'm usually the type of person that gets into discussions which are which can get heated pretty quickly just because I'm sort of a firm believer in, in certain things and I make sure to express that as, as often as possible and as, um, as strong as possible in a way. And I think this is the cause for my own personal uh, sort of conviction about this this um, this subject um, the, the reason why I'm saying this is because I felt in a lot of situations that trying to be perfect sort of ruined my ability to create mistakes and learn from them because this is the problem whenever you're trying to be perfect you're not making mistakes and the problem with mistakes or, or the actual good thing about mistakes is that they teach you they have learning value if you don't make mistakes you do not progress further obviously you make mistakes but you do not show them to the world which means that you're sort of afraid with whatever you are doing and and your own um, you're just trying to cover those things up and and just try to appear in a in a way very polished to the world which is you know in a lot of ways fake just because it represents the way 
that social media has impacted us in a very negative way. And, and, and why I'm saying this is because most of the cases in social media, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Twitter, for example, we are sort of afraid to have opinions which might contradict others just because we, we sort of seek approval to be able to be part of something greater, of a greater group, as if the internet sort of tries to bring us all together and, 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 and sort of make us into a huge family, which is not true, to be honest. However, most people's perception is, in at the subconscious level, is like that, just because they want to be sort of part of a uniform mass of, of, of bodies that shares a similar opinion because they avoid, want to avoid conflict just because they believe that conflict is bad where in some situations it's not necessarily bad it's bad if you let it become sort of if you let it manage you if you let it control you but it can be beneficial especially if you're talking about opinions you cannot have an opinion without creating conflict this is clear if you have an opinion, you are automatically declaring your own self to the world. If you sort of agree with someone else, you're just basically replicating that person's opinion into your own belief system in order to sort of shield yourself from the potential conflict that would arise if you would agree with her, with that person in, in truth. And let me just explain or elaborate on this. For example, if you do if you do not believe what your boss is telling to, telling you, however you you think, in order to sort of appease him or them, it's it's sort of better to keep an appearance of of um, agreement, if you will. You will agree with that person just because you you th you are fearing for your job. You fear about your social standing with that person. This is also caused by, by an, an inferiority complex and, and trying to be perfect. You're, you're trying to be perfect with that person to gain their approval and to be able to sort of gain, gain the benefits that derive from that approval that that person gives you. Um, and, and that means that you're sort of trying to be... Mm, you're not trying to actually voice yourself as a human being you're you're replicating other people's opinions and you're not sort of developing your own and i see this a lot of in in a lot of situations in american culture um whenever you're talking with people face to face they really don't tell you what they think about you they are really just super popular super politically correct they have zero opinions which are controversial they're always sort of in the what the masses think however if you take them separately and, and if you remove this sort of visible uh, visible shield or this the fact that the other person sees you they become extremely opinionated just because they don't have to deal with you sort of intimidating them visually in front of them and and that makes them sort of into these keyboard warriors that you see on twitter about uh, sort of telling or all sorts of stupid stuff and and being very polarizing in some situations not necessarily because sort of they're trying to voice their opinions but they also are very um, sort of egotistical towards it and they don't accept criticism and they don't use rational thinking in in the sense that say someone criticizes your opinion and tells them okay this what you're saying is not true because this and this and that we revert back to our own uh, sort of basic belief system instead or or they revert to, to their basic belief system instead of going forward and trying to use rational thought and investigate whatever the other person is saying because in in a normal situation whenever we are being rational this would be the the expected behavior of, of another person for example if i challenge your your belief system and i tell you that whatever you're saying is not true normally what happens is the other person goes and and, and looks for information to understand why the other person thinks that way however there's also the possibility that i've been in, in arguments like this where my belief system 
does not agree with the other person's belief system. However, it's not a factual based discussion. It's one about personal opinion and personal opinion in, 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 in certain subjects um, is, is odd in the sense that it, it reverts back to your core belief system and it not it, it's not necessarily always uh, using the rational part of the brain, which could also explain what I said earlier. So I might be wrong myself. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm just uh, sort of thinking out loud. Um, however, getting back to the discussion, which was about perfection, uh, a lot of people in the design and the development industry suffer from this problem of trying to be to, to create perfect things just because they are being being um, sort of subjects to a, to a process that always scrutinizes and reviews what they do and this in, in creates sort of a habit in your own work ethic and your own personality that you always seek for approval in order to be happy with the fact that you're finished with the reviews and the and the opinions and so on this is the reason why a lot of people develop this perfection system or this belief of perfection about whatever they do because they want to get away from from all the reviews they want to get away from people telling them this is not okay this is not okay let's change this let's change that and so on and and what happens is that in time especially if you're working in the industry for a long long time you just develop this sense of but it has to be perfect it has to look a certain way it has to be sort of uh, flawless in the sense that nobody can criticize it and i'm finally being I, 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 we're as we're sort of reaching for a goal that represents us being able to create something which is in, in, in no need of criticism at any point which at sub, at, at the subconscious level is is obviously impossible to do because there's as, as many people as there are in the world that's how many opinions we have so you're ne never going to be statistically able to convince or, or, or accept every person's critique into your own uh, work and be able to I know satisfy it and and define that thing as perfect basically in in the in a, in a meta sense perfection is the sum of of the of the total agreements of everybody in this world so for example if everybody in this world would agree whatever you had done is perfect that would make your world perfect and that would mean that basically perfection is just a matter of view and as long as it's a matter of view it's it's quite impossible to attain because everything I just mentioned earlier about being able to make all of the people in the world agree that whatever you have done is perfect is really really difficult I'm I'm not going to say impossible even though I actually believe that's impossible but it's difficult Let, let's just put it like that um, so is it really worth um, sort of going for perfection in that case that's the question that we should probably ask ourselves is it worth sacrificing yourself um, to be able to go towards a goal that you know you will never reach or is it okay to actually leave things as they are and just go through them by iteration and just don't not not necessarily worry about creating the perfect process following things by the book doing things by the book just doing them so that they are done I'm not saying be a slacker I'm not saying not care about whatever you do obviously care but make sure that you care in such a way that you don't detract from your own personal time from your own personal needs because those are important as well and you need to be able to take care of your own needs above the needs of whatever it is that you are doing and of of the people that are scrutinizing your work your your own person is more important than them just because if you do not exist and if, if you fail as a, as a if your psyche fails you won't be able to do your job if you're not able to do your job you're not able to sustain yourself you're not able to take care of your kids you're not able to do anything that would normally qualify you to be able to do something which is close or remote to perfection 
which is why I'm saying that basic needs should be covered first and then um, sort of these meta goals in terms of trying to reach perfection and so on and so forth. Those should be sort of the last ones. Those, if you will, think of this as a uh, as Maslow's pyramid in the sense that at the very top of this should be aspirational goals like this and, and for example trying to change the world um, aspiring for perfection or mastery in whatever it is that you are doing just try to flip this and think about what you're doing and do it out of joy don't do it because you want to create perfection just do it because it, it, it gives you a, a sense of fun it gives you a sense of fulfillment and it gives you a sense of satisfaction don't go for perfection if you go for perfection you will always be unhappy whereas if you go for let's see where this takes me keep an open mind try to have fun while you're doing it and and sort of uh, go for learning something new instead of creating something perfect i think you'll be much more successful and i think you'll put a lot less pressure on your own self in whatever it is that you're doing just because pressure is the enemy of of performance on a long-term goal and how my dad likes to put it life is not a sprint it's a marathon so you'll need all of your energy uh to be able to run until the finish and and exhausting it on on trying to be perfect right now is not going to help you out in the f in the future don't be so hard on yourself a lot of people are not as hard on you as you think they are and and probably in most cases our biggest critics are is 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 us we we are own our own worst enemy and our biggest critic just because we like to be as close as perfect so that other people would like us more and appreciate us more for what we think we should be instead of what we are but this is sort of ingrained in us from whenever we're leaving school just because we're being educated that it's it's not okay to make mistakes it's not okay to write in a specific way it's not okay to be a lefty or a righty it's not okay to be gay it's not okay to be bi and so on and so forth it's okay to be whatever the heck you want to be that's the thing it's okay to do whatever you want to do as long as it makes you happy and it doesn't interfere with other people's happiness as well so if you if you at the end of the day manage to be able to do your job not perfectly just do it so that it's 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 done and you fulfill your goal and there's more work tomorrow let it be just just let it be like that i always have this problem of mm, sort of never being able to finish work just because i'm, I'm sort of uh, looking for the definition of done i'm sort of always looking to to f to, to to be able to see all of my tasks and and, and find the, the the check mark on them and whenever I see sort of empty spaces on my task to do list or, or my calendar and I'm I'm sort of freaking out because I'm thinking dude I'm, people are going to think I'm lazy and I'm not doing anything and then they are going to to call me out on this and uh, tell me that I'm not doing my job and so on when it's actually just all in my head 90% of the time it's all in our heads it's not someone telling you this and that and if they are you can safely ignore them obviously because those are just time periods that happens to be like that and it's okay to slack it's okay sometimes to be to be egotistical and want to think about yourself more than you want to think about work it's super okay for that you need to have a psychic uh, you need your psyche in top condition and if that means cutting time off certain things from work ju just do it because other times you'll be able to cope with a lot of stress in a better way just because of this amount of time that you slacked off um I i'm going to link up into the into the description of this podcast a, a book which is really really awesome and i think too few people actually read it and and, and understand it in its in its and, and see its actual value um it's called Emotions at Work, I believe. 
um, and, and it's a really cool book. I, I think a lot of people should read it just because it, it sort of educates you to be not as harsh with yourself and be more lenient and, and to, to sort of alleviate this perfection that you want to project upon yourself as well as others. And here's the thing, whenever you're tr sort of demanding things of yourself, you're also projecting this onto others as well. So without you knowing, if you're demanding of yourself and try to create perfect things, you will automatically expect, expect other people to do the same thing because most of us, if not all of us, judge others based on how we judge ourselves. And this is why there's a lot of uh, uh, conflict in a lot of cases between colleagues just because there's m mismatches of expectancy like for example if I'm expecting you to, to do as perfect as I did on a specific job it's because I'm sort of projecting onto you what I'm expecting of myself and that means that if you have different priorities than me which is absolutely okay to have by the way I'm going to see you as a slacker just because I'm thinking this guy is not he doesn't have the same values as I do and it's sort of unfair to do that just because not every person has the same life not every person has the same uh, sort of uh, time availability and they have a different family situation than others so maybe even a financial situation which is different than others which is obvious um, and, and that means that we're we're not alike. You shouldn't project your own demands onto other people. Just deal with them on on your own terms and and try to 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 be demanding with yourself if you want to, but don't project it on others because it's a very toxic way of of making sure um, sort of people will will shy away from you. Try to stay away from the burden of perfection as much as possible, if you can. And if you can sort of get away from perfection, try to find a hobby that lets you make mistakes and, and that lets you be imperfect, lets you sort of have mistakes that are not being judged by others. For example, in, in you, you keep a garden and, and if all of your tomatoes are not perfect and are not Instagram worthy, that's okay. Just keep at it and, and do whatever you do it for fun, for relaxation. You need you need that relaxation to be able to um, un, sort of charge off your brain from, from working as much as it does whenever you're working on something which demands you to be perfect and, and sort of you, you feel yourself being drawn into that sort of uh, spiral of perfection if you will try to try to use um, other hobbies to be able to get away from that and to make imperfect things with those hobbies to counterbalance the perfection that you're trying to achieve during your day job it's going to help you a lot and, and make you be happier with yourself as well. Allow yourself to experiment, allow yourself to make mistakes. This is how we learn as individuals. And it's it's sort of social media has taken this a lot uh, from us just because when whatever we post, we get unsolicited sort of feedback from people with, with regards to that. For example, if you post your garden, either people are going to like it or they're going to hate it. When they hate it, they're not going to say anything about it just because they're being courteous. And if they like it, um, they'll you'll probably see likes and hearts and whatever the, the hell that is. Um, but don't try to post these things on social media for, for sort of getting approval. If you want to post them because you're, you're proud of them, just do it and, and leave it at that. Don't quantify them via the likes and the shares and the whatnots. It, it doesn't have to be like that not everything has to be measured and ranked and sort of quantified in a perfect way or, or in a way that's visible to be able to bring you joy the, the problem is today with with today's um, sort of society is that relies too much on validation to be able to be happy and you actually don't need validation to be happy that's the key cheat code that nobody actually tells us we don't need validation from others to be happy we just need to not care 
about other people's opinion. What a novel idea. And just go on with whatever it is that we are doing. And I know it's difficult. It's, it's difficult for me too not to care about people's opinion when I'm working as a designer eight hours a, uh, eight hours a day for like 12 years. It's, it's difficult to get out of this spiral and be able to enjoy whatever that I'm doing just because I'm doing it. But I'm trying to go there myself. And, and this is the main reason why I also added this topic here. Because I'm really sure that a lot of people are struggling with finding joy in whatever they are doing. Just because they ended up doing it and, and sort of transformed it into a job. And, and the job itself is being is being made so that we're always putting stuff out for for other people's review approval opinion and so on it, we we don't have anything that we keep for ourselves we're sort of too open with with ourselves or or, or with the people around us and and there's no room for sort of psychological intimacy in a way there's no way to actually be not ju not feel judged all the time yeah, so in order to do that we either need to step away from social media which is obviously impossible or we can we can act actively educate our brains to stop caring about those things and, and and move into a situation where we're making mistakes and we accept them and we sort of go with the flow let do things which are creative and, and sort of solicit our brains to be, for example, let, let me let me give you a simple example. Today I've been playing with my kid. He always asks me to play Lego with him. And I usually say no, just because ever since I can remember, I've, I've always, because I'm always thinking about specifications. So whenever I'm thinking of, of, of playing with him, I'm, I'm absolutely scared of whatever I should be building because I have no clue. I literally have no clue what to build with him and what I'm doing what I did today was just like I, I started with a piece of brick and then added another one and another one and it also it sort of spiraled and I actually built a car without actually knowing and it came out pretty decent and the thing is that it it felt so good just because I didn't necessarily think about the constraints but I went with the flow of that specific car and I really enjoyed spending time with my kid instead of being focused on meeting a specification that he or someone else told me that I should be building and I think this was a huge less lesson for me that I should probably be pursuing more things that I like instead of doing things that are fixed towards some specifications that are fitting into a specific, um, I don't know, description of what it is to be done. And, and I hope you guys find some time for yourselves to do something like that as well. If you have kids, play with them. And, and I think parents need to listen to their kids a lot more uh, just because they can teach us a lot about being human. And we sort of forget that because we're too busy being uh, at our jobs 24-7. That being said, I wish you have an awesome evening. I hope you subscribe and I hope you share this podcast, probably this podcast episode with other people as well. If you think they have problems with perfection, if you... If you think this could help them, please share it with them and, and maybe they'll find something useful. Maybe they'll find themselves uh, in, in the words that I just spoke earlier. Um, I, I really hope someone, someone gets some benefit out of this episode because this is one which is really important for me from, from, a, from, a, lot of, uh, from a lot of points of view. Okay then. Uh, have an awesome evening and talk to you next time. Until then, bye-bye.